We have been referred to as living in the shadow of the greatest generation, and it's true. For me, I enlisted. It doesn't mean a lot whether anybody said welcome home or not, but the guys who were drafted, most of them were just out of high school, and they had plans for their future, and it was jerked away from them. Far too many of them lived with that for the rest of their lives. Far too many of them lost their lives. You begin to wonder why nobody here cared about that. Nobody really cared. The patriotic goal at the college is for students to have an understanding of American heritage, civic responsibility, love of country, and a willingness to defend it. It's something that's really woven into the fabric of our everyday lives here. The Patriotic Education Travel Program here at College of the Ozarks, in sum, is really an opportunity for students to be paired with veterans and travel to the places where they have actually served. And they learn from the people who actually did the hard work, literally in the trenches, on those foreign battlefields. As a student at CFO, I was blessed with an opportunity to travel to South Korea. My favorite part of that whole experience was just getting to sit down with some of those veterans and getting to hear their stories. It's not just a trip all about sightseeing and having fun. Each day that they're on these experiences, they write a blog post and they even take turns sharing instructionally along the way. I don't think I said three words that wasn't recorded by somebody. They documented everything, my gosh. These are stories that are hard to find in books. For once, somebody wanted to listen and they wanted to listen for 12 days <laughs> and they're gonna tell somebody. Seoul is one of the largest cities, largest populations in the world, and when these guys were there last, it was almost nothing. And so seeing them and the pride that they had. What I saw was a miracle. We gave them individual freedoms that they have prospered and done well with. My gosh, they're one of the leading industrial nations in the world. And they have freedom, and that's something special. And I thought, you know what? That makes us pretty special. The people of South Korea, when they saw our guys wearing Korean war hats or military pins, just this emotion of gratitude from these people. I've had them stop and ask me to pose for pictures with their family. They teach their children about these kids that came from 8,000 miles away to give them freedom. I'm a school teacher and I'm able to pass on this connection that I have with these veterans. I'm going to share their stories and bring these things to life with some of my kids. I love being able to, to impact them the way that I was impacted by these vets. We traveled to Korea in 2013, but those students have graduated and moved on. And we were looking for an educational opportunity for our current students. I know of the Korean War. I think a lot of people, especially on this campus, know of it but they don't know too much about it, and that's the problem. Recently, we had the opportunity to interact with a Korean War veteran, Mr. Herbert Kozort of Nixon, Missouri. Mr. Kozort has eight children, and I think half of them attended college here. I'm from uh, Busan. Busan. Yes, sir. We landed in Busan, and that next night, we were shooting at each other. Mr. Kozart, he grew up in uh, Wiseman, Arkansas. I'm Raymond Hunter, and I'm from Horseshoe Bend, Arkansas really close to Wiseman. He was just like me. When I talked to Mr. Kozart, it was like maybe talking to another version of me. They airdropped us supplies. They just dropped cans of old beans and weenies and corned beef hash. <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna fight <laughs> full of corned beef hash? <laughs> dog, dog wouldn't eat that stuff. <laughs> How old were you, Mr. Kozart, when you went to Korea? 20, I guess. 20. I was in the second division whenever the war started. Oh my gosh, I could only imagine, you know, you're working on the farm, maybe just you and your family, and all of a sudden you're being shipped over to a different country. Never heard of Coral Red before then. It's doing what we're told, I guess, I don't know. I wanted to get out of there the best way you could. He didn't know why he was serving at the time. He just served and he just did what he was supposed to do. Was there any point while you were serving that you just thought about giving up? Yeah. Cold and hungry, you just about as soon get it over with. How I got out of there, I don't really know. 
look, I guess. So he talked about how most of his friends didn't make it, only 11 of them were able to make it out alive. We lost 5,000 something men there in one or two days. At full strength, 140 something men probably in a battery. And uh, there's 11 of us got back to Seoul. There were a few, several of them were taken prisoner, but they died in P.O.W. camps. How do you think that impacted your life after war? Oh, you think sometimes how it comes to me. And I never got a scratch. Just wonder why why you got picked and, and nobody else did. What was it like when you came back home from Korea in the United States? Was there any like celebrations or no, no nothing. Nothing. Yeah, hey, yeah, they didn't uh, nobody celebrated. There wasn't anybody there to meet the boat. It's just another day, really, coming back from Korea. To come back and not get respect from the people or be forgotten, you just really hope that never happens to someone again. And uh, I think that's what College of Those Arts is about, is, you know, bringing up these experiences with that generation in the Korean War before, you know, that generation is gone. School of history doesn't talk much about it. They've hardly at all mentioned in the history books about about the Korean War. They just call it the Forgotten War. Yeah, I mean, it is important to like remember histories and important to remember like what people did, like sacrificing their like in you know, a part of time, like to like serve it for their country. Well, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for uh, Mr. Kojort's life. Lord, we just thank you for his willingness to serve and to minister to us as students and allow us to learn from him. And we thank you for the opportunity to visit with him today. As I was sitting and talking mm -hmm. with him, I realized there were a lot of things I, I, I don't know. And it, it did kind of spark my interest and I want to learn more about the Korean War and honestly, all the wars that uh, America has served in. And when I got back from that experience with Mr. Kozar, I actually got on Google and started looking about the Korean War and how it all happened. Well, Herbert, thanks for letting us come and visit with you today. Yeah, thank you. It's been a pleasure to get to know you. Can I give you a hug? Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your story. And thank you for your service. Yeah. Good that they learn more about it, maybe. Maybe pass it on down. I think it's incumbent upon us as Americans to share their stories. Whenever I talk about our Korean War, history will be like part of my story. For a school with a patriotic goal, it is only fitting that we have memorials here so that our students can have a constant reminder of those who have gone before them. I've had the opportunity several times to be up there with veterans and they are finding names of their friends and they say, I served with him. And they tell you his story. We are very happy to give long overdue honor to the Korean War veterans who will be forgotten no more, not at College of the Ozarks. This country paid with 36,000 American lives and almost 1,000 from the state of Missouri alone. These veterans, like all veterans, are due our respect. I'm glad they done it. Got a second World War and Vietnam deal down here, so why not Korea? Here, there will be lasting impact. This will go on forever. This kid's gonna say, Mom, what's this about? And then they're gonna have the plaque there to read. They will know and they will see what sacrifice really looks like. This place is special. The backbone of patriotic education is ensuring that the legacy of our heroes is preserved. There is no other nation on earth that has furnished as much of its treasure and blood, its precious blood, as the United States in support and defense of liberty in other places. Nobody. We don't tell people. They don't know. They should. And here, this will help in their learning experience. As students, reading a textbook, watching documentaries, you know, you only get really a little bit of the picture. But then when you're talking to someone and they're saying, this is what I experienced, this is what I heard or smelt or witnessed, it is the closest thing you can get to actually experiencing it yourself. And I hope the college never stops giving us experiences that allow us to understand life in a beyond the textbook way.